Mary Fowler, she's my older sister. She's a professional football player in England. She's currently playing for Manchester City. She's also playing for the Australian national team. Mary was born in Cairns, Australia. She started playing soccer when she was seven years old. She's the middle child of us five. And we all loved playing football together growing up. recall having one childhood dream, which was to go to the Olympics. It was just amazing to see the best athletes in the world all competing on this one stage and be running out there, not just for themselves, but for their country. I connected with that. I kind of imagined myself being there and wanting to represent my country as well. As I told late this morning on the phone, I had another surprise yesterday morning. What was that, he said? Mary. And my God, when I started the whole door, <laughs> it was a great surprise to see her, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, God, now she's not taking a stretch, isn't she? Quite, you know, good for the position she plays. I remember when I was 10, I played in a boys' team. I was the only girl on that team, and I was just with a bunch of boys. And making friends and hanging out, it didn't come as straightforward as it did when I was with my sister. I remember I was an under 12, and she was an under 10. She'd play up in my team sometimes when we'd need help, or when we didn't need help, and we just wanted Mary to play anyway and we played in the boys' comp. Five of us girls playing, but we were all good, you know? We were tough girls. When the team was going well, I sort of had to, had to play Mary at left back a little bit so she wouldn't dominate the game sometimes. <laughs> um, and that's, you know, playing against teams, boys two years older than her, she was still pretty dominant then. We were all friends and we wanted her to be in the team and her challenge was in that under 12s with us. I have a fond memory of a day with um, Mary and Kieran and Keegan's team when they played against the boys team and the, and the coach of the other team went ballistic at half time because he couldn't believe his boys team were losing to a bunch of girls. How can you be losing to a bunch of team of girls? <laughs> I remember at some point I was told I'm not allowed to play in the team anymore because I'm too young to play up. During the game, the, the manager of the other team went over to the office and, and made a complaint about her, her playing when, when she was supposedly too young. The office come over and, and made, made us remove Mary from the, from the game. I remember being quite sad because I didn't really understand why I wasn't allowed to play up. I was doing well in that team and I really enjoyed playing in that team. It's a, it was a pretty sad day. <laughs> sad day for, for regional sports, I think, um, let alone a 10-year-old girl. But then we had the under-12 school championships. Obviously, you hear about the uh, Mary Fowler, Kira Fowler, and so I went and watched them. And, OK. These girls, I hope they're coming to the trials. For me, I was just thinking that if I was making the Queensland state team the best under 12 girls in the state, going two years up, as they said, was too much. If I made that, then for me, that would just be a F you in their face. So when my sister and I did get selected into the Queensland team, that felt pretty good. Obviously, Mary being 10 and picked in a Queensland team ahead of, you know, other 12-year-olds did raise a few eyebrows. She was quite happy that there was no one that was telling her that she couldn't do it. She was purely selected based on her ability, not her age. You know, if you're good enough, you're old enough, the old adage goes. And I think that changed some part of me. Now I felt that I could do anything if I really put my mind to it.
I believe every parent wants the best for their kids. And for me, it was about my kids understanding that you had to believe and see things in a way that you felt that you could achieve things or you were capable of achieving things. That was an important message for me to communicate to my kids that they were, they were able and capable of doing anything that they wanted to do. Merci. Merci. The last time that like all of us, like the whole family was in Cairns, was like maybe four years ago. And I haven't been back home for like three years. Wow. Hey, Marie. Welcome home. Welcome home. Great to see you. Great to see you. Oh, wow. I'm taller than you this time. <laughs> yeah. My family is my anchor. We've done a lot of stuff together that, looking back, I can see has shaped the, the player that I am today and the person that I am. <laughs> Tell if it was a llama or an alpaca because it was shaved. <laughs> what is the difference anyway? One of them had ears that were a bit more big and pointy. The other one just had two little peep. And then one of them had like what? Little, little peep, <laughs> little, little ears. <laughs> like little ears. <laughs> Some of my fondest memories were actually the games that were not the official ones. They were just the ones on the beach and in, in the backyard, and I didn't know much about it. I didn't know that, like, you know, you can have a career in the sport. For me, it was just a game back then, and everyone in my family enjoyed playing it, so we played it a lot. I had young children who had got uh, attitudes where they wanted to achieve, they wanted to get better. So for me, it was about, right, what do I do? And I wanted to feel that I did the best I could with what I had at the time. Fast forward a few years, and I remember being in the Australian camp in preparation for the 2020 Olympics. We were in camp for about one month before we actually went to the Olympics. Everybody was like a big group of us there, and not everyone was going to be making it into the squad. This was going to be the decider whether you're in the team or not. My dream was so close to becoming real, but also so close to like being four years away. I remember the day we were going to get told if we were selected in the Olympic team or not. I just remember feeling pretty nervous. I said to myself before I went in there, no matter what happens, I'm not crying in front of my coaches. <laughs> we just chatted for a bit about how things had been going, how I'd been performing. The head coach, Tony, gave me my piece of paper. It said ticket to Tokyo and after, you know, 30 seconds or so, it just really hit me that I actually, like, I did it. I was going to be going to the Olympics and I could tick off that childhood dream of, of getting there. To be able to get a goal at the Olympics, I remember after I scored it, I was, yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Paper, scissors. Yes! <laughs> I hope football brings a lot of joy in my life. There have been difficult times in football, but now I'm at a club that I love being at and I'm really enjoying my time there. I have friends and I have a good balance between playing football professionally and then just being me. I can have my social life, becoming a, you know, a young woman. I think by doing that, I, I won't have any regrets about it.